Hello everyone, this is Usapang Kahit Ano and I'd like to welcome you back and of course, I'd like to thank you as well for subscribing to my YouTube channel. Today, we are going to talk about copy reading symbols. Specifically, I'll teach you or I'll show you how to insert punctuations in written texts. The symbols that I'll be using are the ones presented by the AP style book. So let's begin. One of the most common punctuations is the period and there are two ways on how to insert this punctuation. One is to draw the period and encircle it. So that's how you do it. Another one would be to simply draw a small x. Okay, so that's how you insert a period. Another punctuation is the comma. So here you can see three items and if we use the Oxford comma, which I personally advise, okay, uh, to use the, the Oxford comma, all the other uh, speakers, other writers would say that if the word and is already here, you don't have to use the comma. However, there are instances that without the Oxford comma, uh, the meaning of the, the phrases, the meaning of the clauses, or the meaning of the entire sentence changes. So that's why I advise that you have to use the Oxford comma. So this is how you um, insert the comma. Okay, next we have quotation marks. So here you have this example, the movie Over the Moon. So meaning, Over the Moon is a title of a movie and you'd like to, insert, uh, to, to enclose this in double quotation marks. So all you have to do is to draw the double quotation marks, okay, and, okay, and the close quotation marks, <laughs> okay, and insert, okay. Next is to how insert an apostrophe. Okay, so in this example, there is a contraction and obviously you have to insert an apostrophe. So, K and the apostrophe. So that's how you insert an apostrophe. Okay, the uses of punctuations are discussed in another video. So if you want to learn something about them, then you may find the video in this channel. Okay. Another punctuation is the hyphen. Okay. Hyphens are usually used to separate word, parts of words. Okay. So here we have the, the example 22,000 and 22 needs to have a hyphen. So we're going to insert a hyphen. So to do that, okay, and... We're using this symbol. So that's the symbol for a hyphen. So it's a double hyphen. Okay. Next. Okay. So here you have to insert a dash. So how do you do this? Before that, let me discuss with you that there are different kinds of dashes. One is the M dash. This one. Okay. And you have the N dash. And of course, you have the double hyphen, so this one. The M dash, okay, you just imagine the capital letter M. So the size of the capital letter M is the M dash, and the size of the capital letter N is the N dash. So I'll try to write a capital letter M here. So this is usually the M dash. dash. Okay, and it's a capital letter N. So that's the N dash. And of course, a double hyphen uses two N dashes. Okay? Here, we have two N dashes there. Um, so when do we use the double hyphen? Sometimes when you're using your laptop or your desktop, there are a few keyboards that have a dash. But there are also keyboards that do not have a dash. So... If your keyboard cannot produce a dash, you will have to resort to a hyphen, right? Okay. But, of course, 
uh, it may be confusing when you simply use a hyphen when you mean a dash. So that's the reason why in American usage, you have to use two consecutive hyphens. So these ones, two consecutive hyphens. A discussion on the uses of this punctuation can be found in another video. All right, let's look at how the dash is inserted. So here, you have Ilocanos are miserly or so they say. Okay, so you want to insert a dash here. So how do we do that? Okay. And then, okay, this is the symbol for the dash. It looks like a wide letter H. Okay, so that's the symbol for a dash. And you might be wondering, what are the two M dashes for? These ones, what are these for? We actually use this one to indicate missing portions of a word, whether unknown or intentionally omitted. So for this one, you have the name of a witness and you don't want to reveal the name. So you use two M dashes to, to, to omit the name. Okay? Next, you have a colon. Although in the Associated Press style book, the colon is not uh, indicated there. Maybe because they're not using colons anymore. I, I, I don't know. I'm not just sure. But um, interestingly, they did not include the colon, the semicolon, the parentheses, and of course the ellipses in, you know, in their list of punctuations. Okay, so here you have Spider-Man Homecoming, and we all know that Homecoming is a subtitle. Okay, so we have to insert a colon, and how do we do that? Okay, and then the colon. All right, so that's how you insert a colon. Next, Okay, you insert a semicolon. Again, AP, in its list of symbols, uh, did not provide uh, a symbol for inserting a semicolon. But for, uh, other references do it like this. So here you have an enumerated name of uh, names of persons and their ages. So usually, we separate these listing with semicolon. So here we are going to insert a semicolon here in this portion. So you insert the semicolon here. Okay? Next, we have exclamation point. So here I have two situations. Uh, one way to do, okay, there are two ways on how to insert an exclamation. One is to simply write the symbol and, and circle it. Okay, and the other one is to draw a slanting line and the symbol. So when do we do that? Personally, I would, adv I would advise that if the exclamation point should be placed at the end of a sentence, then use this symbol, okay, and, and circle. If the exclamation point should be inserted in the middle of a sentence or in the middle of a paragraph, then you use this symbol. Okay? So that's how you do it. Okay. Next, you have the question mark. Okay? So the same with exclamation point, if it's found at the end of the sentence or a paragraph, the symbol and then and circle. If it's found in the middle, like this one, uh, you draw a slanting line and then the question mark symbol. Okay? Next, another one is the ellipsis. Okay? Ellipsis singular, ellipses with an E. Uh, e. Plural. Okay, this one. Yesterday, after months of delay, the president vetoed the bill. And, for example, you are omitting this portion, you want to om omit that, and you only want to retain this one, okay? 
there. Yesterday, the president vetoed the bill. So what do you do? You insert ellipsis. So inserting ellipsis is just like inserting three periods. So you have this period and then encircle there and then encircle or three small X's. Okay, so that's how you do it. So let's do it here, the small excess. There's not enough space. But to illustrate, this is how you insert the ellipsis. Okay. And finally, you have the parentheses. Okay. Plural, parentheses, singular, parentheses. So you have the open parentheses. And you have the close parenthesis. Okay, so for example here, the prize, which is an electric fan, and if and you want to insert uh, um, close and open parenthesis here. So this is how you do it. The open parenthesis and the double hyphen, and then the close parenthesis and the double hyphen. Okay, so that's how that's how you insert parentheses. I hope I was able to help you something. If you have questions, if you have clarifications, you please write them down in the comment section. Okay, in my next video, I'll be talking about the symbols used to indicate or insert numbers and abbreviations, letters and word changes, and of course, other conventions. Again, this is Usapang Kahit Anong.